All right, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us. What's OCD and Mikey. Hey. Thank you again you for bet, being brother. here. We are going to talk. Today is Saturday, um, and it is what uh, what time right now? I don't know, 8 o'clock. 9, nine at least. 9, nine o'clock at night. So day two has wrapped up officially here, um, and it's been uh, an interesting experience, positive experience, I must say. I must say. And I want to give a shout-out to all the exhibitors here who put in the work the hard work to make this event happen happen and give gary props as well thank you for making this happen for all of us right um we couldn't do this we couldn't do what we do without you guys being here so first and foremost you guys are amazing and i cannot even think about the level of work that you guys embark on to put this together i know you used to do shows back in your day so i have no idea what it takes i can only yeah. imagine you know this say i'm glad i don't so, do it anymore <laughs> so i just want to make sure that you guys get your flowers from me for doing all this work okay thank you again to all of you who made this happen um purpose of today's video is to simply talk about our top picks um as far as rooms now remember Typically when we throw a speaker name, unfortunately it's the largest component of a system, but remember that it's a system, right? So we're also giving accolades to the supporting cast behind the speaker. So it's not just the speakers that we're emphasizing here. So if we mention the VAC room as an example, or the Von Striker room, we're also giving accolades to the ancillaries, to the rest of the components that were part of that presentation, okay? So keep that in mind, please. Okay, so let's go over what you chose, and you can go from the three two in your top room that you liked and give us reasons as you go down your list as to why you feel you know you have selected these as the standouts of the show okay sure okay so um what what the, the first of all uh i want to preface this by saying um this show all together i thought was a really agreed good show in that i know what you're saying the vibe is good it's it's really chill it's not commercialized like look there's no macintosh here we walked in and it's like the sign. Yeah, there's there, there's no focal here. There's nope. no, 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 no fiber, no, nothing. No man, none of that. Which what a relief, you know. It's the homies. I feel like it's it's all of us us guys, you know. My old the old group that you know I I I've seen for years. So that was uh, very welcome, and it's just a chill, laid back kind of atmosphere. So I dug that about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's not commercial. Like Expona is more commercial, more suit and ties, more just businessy corporate crap this was very much more about the the enthusiasts you know and, and yeah. the passionates i would say sure. so as far as the rooms are concerned <coughs> i go a lot on um the feel of the room the vibe okay and uh so there was one room when i went in today and i would say it was probably the best feel and the best vibration, the best, like, wow, I could just sit here all day. Like, ah, music, you know. It didn't trigger my analytical mind. I wasn't trying to think about what gear was doing what or what I was hearing in terms of the gear. Okay. I was just immediately connected to the music, and I was like, oh, this is, you know, we listened to some cool old old stuff, and it was just super great. That was the Voxative Room, okay? And that was on fifth, fifth floor. Okay. It's on fifth floor. So the Voxative Room... And it was a, a 845 or an 805 tube amp um, with uh, with their speakers, and we just came in there. I think she was streaming off a well, she was controlling it with the phone, so I don't even know. There was no streamer up there, so I don't even know what was feeding it. I don't even know what the source was. I didn't even care. That's how much it was. It was just like I sat down and I just relaxed. It felt like ah, uh, decompression, you know. Oh, wow. So I really like the Voxative room a lot. Now it, it it was it did have a lot of bass. I don't know. Were you in there? I was then. Okay. Yeah, I definitely. So was. it had a lot of bass, right? But it was sort of a sumptuous sound. It was very enveloping and very like it was full bodied, you know. Okay. And so even though it had a lot of bass, um, I felt that it was it was offset well by the clear highs. Okay. So it was for me. It, it, it wasn't a turnoff, you know. Maybe we come back a little on the bass. The room might have had a note or something like that. But that would uh, that would probably be the best feeling room for me i think number two would have been the wolf von Lange room and okay. you didn't get a chance to see that but i wish you would have it was really a, 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 a they had the highs 
so sorted on those speakers. I mean, it's just the design of the speaker. They're AMTs. They're, they're no big deal. It's a box speaker with a 12-inch driver. Maybe it's a 12-inch driver. Um, it, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a field coil with a passive radiator on back and then a piece of glass on top like plate glass with an a- air motion tweeter on the top. And just the highs were so extended and clear and clean and not exact, not, not, not harsh at all. Got it. You know, so that was very much, it had terrific realism. And the speakers were only about this high. And they were angled up so you could really, it, w- it was amazing. The image was, was up there. They did a really good job. That was Gestalt um, Distribution was the room. Okay. Yep. Um, so that would get my number two, All right. you know, in terms of feel. And then number three um, was AGD production. AGD production and Janssen speakers. The Janssen, did you hear that room, Alberto? I, I heard it, yes. Did you? Yes. Okay. And so um, it, it, it had the electrostatic Janssen speakers yep. with all those white drivers. So it's a combination. It's an electrostatic speaker with a bunch of dynamic drivers lined up in a line array. They give it a nice mid bass, and it was really just terrific imaging. He had it very close to the wall. It was a short kind of a throw distance, um, wide. Um, it, sounded, it, it sounded very good. Consolation, I would say, um, maybe um, those guys up over here, uh, uh, fine uh, group. Fink team. Fink team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Borg. Man, those those little speakers, and they had the little guys, which, man, it sounded really good. Now, this was an example of a big room, huge room, <laughs> freaking huge room, yeah. and they really did well. Yep. They put the speakers super far apart. They yep. towed them in. They cast that image in the middle. I was like, they're doing the proper thing with that. You know? I agree with you there. Yeah. And they are about to be mentioned by me, too, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, so. Um, yeah, man, so those were... Those were my three favorites. Um, if, if I'm going to talk about a couple other other things, or should we talk about other? Let me after? let me let me okay. um, give my take. So again, this is the entire system, okay? Not just the speakers. So if I talk about speakers, please take in consideration the rest of the electronics. They were also winners for me. Okay, so number four, I uh, it's a toss up for me between Von Stryker, the twenty thousand dollar speaker that they had, yeah, that was and good. the Borison, which was eleven k. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, for 11K. To me, one thing we have to make sure that we understand is, and I think you guys also out there need to understand, is you can grab a ten thousand dollar speaker, eleven thousand dollar speaker, and strap a hundred grand worth of electronics, and nine times out of ten, that speaker is going to sound phenomenal, and that is what. Borison is a master. They are masters of this. If you have looked at this room and you saw the keybling, that was quite expensive electronics that they had. Okay, so you had an eleven thousand dollar speaker with an integrated that I believe is like seven grand, and then you see all these power cords, expensive power cords behind. That all adds up. So they are really smart at prepping and getting the room together with the right electronics, expensive electronics, and put a affordable speaker. So that is something that I think that Von Striker didn't quite do um, as far as like really putting super expensive electronics although they did have vac electronics and vac is not exactly cheap or happened to be sitting right next to it Um, but i think those two really could have gone either way for me very different approach Um, of course the von striker had a lot of musicality and airiness there's so much air and with those tweeters Uh, it's very natural sounding the borison is known for sure to have this great crystal clear presentation with immense imaging a big sound stage uh, that surrounded my head and um Overall, I think, again, number three could go to either one of these two speakers. That just I just couldn't decide, so I put both of them, and I mentioned both of them. Now, as far as third spot, my third place is, uh, so, sorry, second place. My second place, I had originally thought this would be, this would be, this would be my number one pick, uh, but I heard the number one speaker, uh, which I'll mention shortly, and I'm going to give this to the Fink team and their bookshelf speaker, the Kim. Okay, the Kim is that bookshelf speaker, and I will I will say it again because I think Tim corrected me on my video. He said this is not a bookshelf speaker. The stands are integrated underneath, so you cannot remove them. Okay, so it's not considered a bookshelf speaker. The design looks like a bookshelf speaker, but it's not. So what I liked about that speaker is that AMT tweeter, to your point, um, it is so airy, it, it's so beautiful sounding, and they're very small speakers, and they were thrown in a massive room. I dare to say it might be just as big as this back room here. 
I mean, it is. Yeah, it was like, a, like, it like probably bigger actually. Thirty by fifty. It, this was a, yeah. a huge room. Now I'm not gonna tell you here. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that the speakers slammed with a lot of deep bass. They did not. Okay, because the limitations of, of, the, of the you know driver size and all of that. But they threw a very nice, complete picture. The sound stage was wide, deep. I couldn't believe how large it sounded. You know, and very enjoyable. And the kicker here, the reason why I selected them as number two, is because the electronics were nothing to nothing special. Like they six, were creek. They were sixty six thousand dollar integrated, yeah, right? right? And a thirty five hundred dollar yes. jack or whatever. And so I'm not yeah. trying to throw shade at the electronics. What I'm saying is they were no like heavy hitter electronics. We were not talking about no. a twenty five thousand dollar integrated. Yeah. So a person who would buy this speaker for. 12.9, which is the MSRP of this Kim loudspeaker, you know, I can see that person going for a $6,000 integrated. It would make sense, right? And they threw a phenomenal presentation. So that just tells me, imagine if you had that speaker set up with even better electronics. How much more can that speaker, you know, give you? And in a smaller room at that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right? That oh, yeah, speaker absolutely. has tons of potential. And I want to give the Think Team, um, a, you know, thumbs up. Because I think I probably overlooked them in the past, uh, but that's what this is all about, right? Eventually, you're gonna keep knocking, on, you know, on somebody's door, and you're gonna get acknowledged. And I did just that today. Um, so kudos to them. Lovely, lovely presentation. I do have an interview coming out with the uh, distributor of the brand, and he goes into much more detail about the design and the designer and their approach when it comes to loudspeaker design. Now, number one is the speaker that to me stole my heart. Okay, this speaker, um, I saw the bigger sibling upstairs for 40K. And I mentioned it on this particular video that I threw, a two minute video. I was doing the wrap up after I left each room for the most part, talking about the room and what I had heard before I forget because we have a short term memory. So I wanted to make sure I threw my, uh, my thoughts out there. Then I met the smaller sibling, the baby for, uh, I believe there were 17K, okay? And it was the Russo, Fiorentino Volterra oh, yeah, MK2. To me, that speaker was it's an Italian brand. Yeah. Okay. Extremely engaging, beautiful sounding. They are not the most dynamic speakers, but I'm gonna tell you, you don't even care to look for dynamics. You are absolutely just floored by the presentation, the, the this beautiful, almost embellished feeling that the speaker has. Uh, that it just takes you away. It makes you want to get up and dance. It makes it, it wants to come out and take your hand. Uh, and Italians are great at that. We know this with Sonos Faber, right? They're very enchanting speakers. Uh, I didn't expect that. I spoke to the person that was running the room. I'm Skip. assuming that is the speaker. Skip. Skip was telling me, you know, that this is a brand new speaker that probably has, I think he said, maybe a week of use. So it's not even broken in. And it was absolutely phenomenal. I give them props for what they have done. Never heard of this brand um, before ever. The looks are there, guys. So I also gave Did them. Did you see the big? You saw the big ones up there, the forty thousand dollars. Yes, yes. Yeah, they had lizard on the side. And yeah. so that speaker was what I originally had selected until he told me they were forty grand. So I knew it was right. going to be out of a running for me because I came out here strictly for affordable loudspeakers. Oh, okay, that was gotcha, the main reason. Gotcha. And then it so happened that they had the affordable ones, yep. 17.5 or 18.5, yep. and they still did the same thing for me. Right? Yes, they yes. took me away. So kudos to them for putting together a nice show. And, and just, you know, they made me not think about, you know, the presentation as far as analyzing the music. I was just sitting down, submersing in the presentation, getting completely comfortable, and I wanted to stay there for longer. But I had to keep moving, guys. So at a high level, I think these are the speakers that I, I really, really was, was digging. Now, honorable mentions, I must say that um, the first time I went there yesterday, I was not too impressed with the system, and that was a core acoustics. I didn't like what I heard yesterday. Um, maybe it could have been the electronics. There was a little bit of an issue with the mid-range. It was not dead center. I mentioned it to um, Valerio about it. We spoke about it briefly. Uh, he acknowledged it was a room issue. And uh, I was trying to get him to see if maybe we can compensate by using the balance uh, button on the pre on the ample on the preamplifier to kind of compensate and make the mids kind of lock in in the center. Um, but anyhow, long story short, today I went and I heard the new ones that they just released, which he didn't tell me yesterday. <laughs> so um, they were white. 
I don't know if you got to see I them. I haven't today. seen them yet. So they're white now, right? There's, it's a different finish. I believe it's a different material they're using now. And the tweeter changed completely. Mm -hmm. So now it seems like he's using a softum tweeter instead of the beryllium tweeter. Now, I believe you can still order it with a beryllium tweeter, but now he's doing softum. And he had it I connected. Like and he had it connected with what I had never heard before, which is the Hegel H. 30A power amp with the matching preamplifier, which is brand new, recently released from Hegel. Hmm. It threw a, an enormous presentation. It really had slam, dynamics, everything, okay? Um, I told him that, in my opinion, hands down, this is the best I've ever heard a core acoustic sound. Now, he's had it in the past with VAC, with these expensive vac monos uh, the statement pieces i believe and uh, i love that presentation but i just feel that tubes are about the engagement factor but they lack this immediacy the leading edges to the extent of some of the best solid state amplification now that's my opinion and right? you guys may feel different but you guys have seen shootouts between vac statement monos and my griffin mephistos in the past which by the way you all selected the mephisto as winning and I, I had a poll at the end actually where you guys did not know what you were voting for and about 70% of you guys selected solid state over tube amplification. So I'm a believer that what I heard through those Acora acoustic um, speakers was just much more better through solid state in tubes. You know, and I'm not knocking tubes because they do have a place you know in our hobby you know we, we do have to listen i'll have to go listen to that but it's a phenomenal sound kudos to them i did not pick them as the winner because those speakers retail for 27 28 dollars and i wanted to stay right right under 20k so if you notice all the top three speakers are all either 20 000 or less nothing mm -hmm. was above it so i came here to do exactly what i told you guys i was going to do give you affordable options as far as loudspeakers <laughs> And again, keep in mind, the rest of the electronics, in my opinion, had full synergy. Okay, so the entire room, if you're looking to build a system, and I'm mentioning a speaker to you guys right now that I liked, you should also take a look at the electronics that they use at the show, because that's going to give you an understanding of which direction to go into as far as amplification, preamplification of the cables and whatnot. Okay, so let's talk about one thing before it escapes my mind. Uh, the no-shows. I want to talk about no-shows, right? So we didn't have any Focal today. <laughs> we, we did not have Macintosh. No Macintosh here. We didn't have Sonos. No Sonos, Faber. And I, I am going to swing back around. Okay, and Ooh, I'm gonna, Put on the gloves. I got to put my gloves on. People love this. You'll watch my videos when I go off, okay? Let's keep it real. No Dart Zeal again. Zero pieces from Dart Zeal. How many times have I been mentioning this? Now, at least Macintosh will be probably at Expona, Sonos Faber, Focal. We know they're going to be there. So, I, so they just didn't show up here this time. Okay, but they're usually regulars. Darzeal. I mean, you are claiming to be the Michael Jordan of, you know, audio and all this pedigree and all this exclusiveness. Maybe in other countries you do, because in the U.S. you have absolutely no representation. You have absolutely blindfolded all of us from what you're capable of. And if the distributor is watching this, wherever you are, wherever you're sitting right now, okay, I'm calling you out. You got to help dealers to put product on the floor, for real. And I don't talk, I'm not talking about those little tiny mom and pop shows. Bring it to the big leagues. Bring it to Expona. Bring it to the big shows. Not these li the, the little... 10 room shows. No, that doesn't count. Bring it to the big boys, okay? I want to see it. I'm calling you out once again for hiding behind the bushes because you are becoming the Bigfoot of the industry. Everybody hears about you. Nobody has ever seen you. I don't think he's seen you in oh, you, yeah. but ages well, they ago. Used to, they used to show up, yeah, yeah, with Evolution. What's up with uh, that? Speakers. No Darzeel? What's up with yeah. that? You guys are charging top dollar and you're not showing up? <laughs> How can you do that? You got these brands they that, can. <laughs> you know, right? they can't. Says who? <laughs> I don't know. Was Boulder who? here? Was Boulder here? Boulder is not here, but yeah. Boulder has been more times than For not. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And they're, then they go to Expona. Yeah, and so yeah. they have been, even though a lot of times... And Griffin have, was here. Griffin was, yeah, Griffin yeah. had some representation too, yeah. which, you know, and even at Expona, <laughs> although they had a static display of the Apex, right, and the Commander, they did show up, so I give them kudos for that. Now, yeah. now let me just say something about that, Griffin. It's time that you all start to sh 
you got to start displaying this commander stuff and apex okay so mm -hmm. i expect griffin to show something with the apex and the commander come may or what is it april of 2023 yeah. Yeah. when the next expona is happening or even maybe at the florida audio show in february because i know you guys had just recently released the apex and the commander we understand that maybe you guys were not ready there's a lot of logistics involved we get that but a year has passed it's time to show your big boy amplifier and bring amplifier to the public and if we have to make a line outside like you all typically make us do take you know grab tickets and have an appointment do what you got to do but it's time to put the apex in the commander front and yeah, center yeah. and this is something that you're always being asked okay about hey how much does someone have have to how much does someone have to spend in order to get top performance or a great presentation i think him and i today have just demonstrated and given you choices where you're not breaking the bank okay because he currently represents a dac that's 20k right now right 24 so it's even more money than some of the rooms that you probably have on paper yeah for sure okay so and plus the rest of the electronics right so his your system is easily 100 grand 150 yeah. 150k yep okay mine you know is a lot of, a lot a lot of money too yeah and we Not have more. voted for rooms that are a fraction of our systems a systems that we are pretty much saying you know what i can live with this yeah no problem yeah. i can have fun with this i can enjoy it i can so we've always been criticized for you don't really need to spend this kind of money to enjoy audio i can have as much fun by playing my airpod or my my headphones or you know <laughs> well, good cool then all the power to you do it if you can do it for a hundred bucks five hundred dollars do it more power to you i wish i had it like you okay totally that's what i say i'm like you're blessed man if you can find killer hi-fi for a couple grand be thankful if you can't hear power cords you can't hear cables be thankful if you don't hear the difference between a three thousand dollar DAC and a twenty four thousand dollar be thankful, be thankful you because can't. you're not going to spend the money you yep. don't have to worry about it that's awesome man you can't and i know that Count a, your lot, blessings. a lot of times we're criticized because you know recently i made a statement about outlets making a difference sonically speaking you can hear this <laughs> they do. in a well-designed system you can hear the wire through your wall you know when you did that panel that you put that, that extra panel that you showed me when I came over, that made a difference in your system because yes. you have more power. Did you see the King Rex guy down here? I did see that, yeah. and I'm going to put up uh, put up a video um, pretty soon. You guys are going to see that full uh, interview with him. Uh, but yeah, so kudos to you guys for you know enjoying something more affordable. Today we came on a mission, both of us, to give you guys top choices for a lot less money than our own, than our own systems. Okay, so <coughs> there you have it. Anything else, Mike, you want to? No. I think that's it, man. All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed our coverage of the 2022 Capital Audio Fest here in Rockville, Maryland. All until next year. Peace.